Did you know that there is a contest known as the Alibaba Global Mathematics Competition, where the top four winners will get forty thousand US dollars each, and even up to the seventieth position, the the seventieth person will get five thousand US dollars. So looking at these great prizes, just how difficult is this contest? Well, this contest requires solid understanding of undergraduate and even graduate level mathematics. I mean, just look at this problem from last year's final round. It has a huge amount of obscure symbols and mentions of jargons like sort function and Fourier transform. So it's definitely no easy walk in the park. So say goodbye to hopes and dreams of winning an award at this contest. But what we'll do today is we'll be looking at one of the more accessible problems. In the final round of last year's contest, by accessible I mean at least the question is in English and we can understand what it's talking about. But the solution is again no easy fit. So let's see what this problem is exactly. It's an interesting problem actually. It's a, a probability question. So in a dance party, initially there are twenty girls and twenty two boys in the pool, and infinitely many more girls and boys waiting outside. In each round, a participant is picked uniformly at random. If a girl is picked, then she invites a boy from the pool to dance, and then both of them leave the party after the dance. If a boy is picked, then she invites a girl and boy from the waiting line, and they dance together. The three of them all stay after the dance. The party is over when there are only boys left in the pool. So there's two parts to this question. First part is what is the probability that the party never ends? So let me just translate this. Uh, English into a diagram, so it's easier to digest what happens. So I'm going to put the notes、uh, on the line where a note represents the number of girls in the pool currently. So you can have zero girls,、uh, one girl, two girls. So the number of boys will be always too larger. And basically, what happens is when you,、uh, you start off at the note twenty, but in general,、um, at the note k where there are k number of girls, there's a k over. Two k plus two probability that, uh, you end up picking uh, you end up picking picking a girl. So therefore, you minus uh, one one girl and one boy after that. So you end up going to the left, and then conversely, there's a probability of k plus two over two k plus two, where you pick a boy, and so you add a girl and a boy, which means you move to the right by one step to the node k plus one. So this and the question is, what is the probability? Uh, that you never reach uh the note zero. Okay, so I'm going to present a sort of solution to this question, but there is one part in the solution that I'm not entirely satisfied with. So I'm not sure how rigorous you will accept this solution. Definitely, uh, it still makes for an interesting discussion. Uh, and you can take a look and see whether you're satisfied with the solution. So. I'll just summarize the problem here. We already have the diagram, so it make it easier to、uh, recall what's the question. Now I'm gonna let P K be the probability of the party never ending, given that you are currently at note K. So I think this is a pretty standard approach for this kind of problems,、uh, probability problems. And you can write down basically、uh, a recurrence relation or sort of the relation between different probabilities based on the transition. So. Uh, P K, you can condition on the fact that either you go to the left or you go to the right. So if you condition going to the left, then there's this probability of happening, and then you end up with uh P K minus one. So the other scenario is you have this probability and you end up with P K plus one. So overall P K is the given by the uh this equation here, where you condition going to the left or going to the right, and so once you have this recurrence relation, I think. Uh, quite naturally, want to see whether you can solve it for the answer. So let's start with the small cases where p one, uh, is given by, uh, plugging this in is actually just one quarter chance to the left, one uh three quarter chance to the right. So it's three quarter of p two, and then if you write down for p two, you have in terms of p one and p three. But then you can substitute p one equals three quarter p two into this equation, so that gets rid of p one and appears. Uh, a equation in terms of only p two and p three. That if you simplify, you get p two equals eight over nine p three. If you do this again, uh, for p three, now you have in terms of p two and p four, but you can use this equation here. Substitute p two out. 
in terms of P3. So your equation in terms of P3 and P4, which you can solve as P3 equals 15 over 16 P4. So I don't know if you notice any pattern so far, but I mean, this is a uh, quite natural approach. You find a pattern and then you try to prove it by induction. And it is in this case, it looks like maybe PK minus one is, uh, the bottom is K square and the top is K square minus one. And then this fraction times PK. So, so far, this is the pattern that seems to be implied by the small cases. So what you can do is you can, once you have this pattern, it's pretty straightforward to use induction. You just plug it into this uh, recurrence relation. And you can confirm that yes, this is indeed the case, but that doesn't really uh, help solve the problem yet. So again, we have the recurrence relation and then this is the sort of the simplified recurrence relation where we can write one term in terms of the previous. Um, but unfortunately, what you can do is you can keep rolling this down, uh, rolling this recurrence relation down and then get PK in terms of this uh, product of fractions times uh, P1. Uh, which, so, which seems to be hitting a base case. So now what happens next? Okay, over here at least you see there's a telescoping uh, property that we can use. So for example, the three square is cancelled by the three and three here. The four square will be cancelled by a four and a four in the flanking fractions. So if you do all the cancellations, you will get uh, k over k plus one times two uh, times p1. Okay, so very good. We have written all the pks in terms of uh, P1, but still we need to know what is P1. So, uh, unfortunately, it seems that we are stuck. So what I have done is I came up with this uh, method of trying to solve for P1, where I imagine that there is a absorbing state. There's a right end to this uh, line, which is at uh, a large integer n. So. Instead of a in semi infinite line, I'm going to have a very large, uh, a right, right end, right wall to this, uh, line. And I'm going to write PK, n as the probability of the party hitting n instead of zero. Uh, it will first hit n instead of first hit zero, given that, uh, you are currently at node K. So the hitting n, where n is very far to the right, is sort of the analogy to the party now ending and the, the walk uh, escapes towards infinity. Uh, so actually you realize that the recurrence relation will be identical to the previous case. So if you, uh, by, by solving it in I, I, the exactly the same way, you get the identical uh, relationship between PK and PK minus one. Uh, so which means the, uh, the relationship between PK and P1 will be identical to before. But now the nice thing is we actually, uh, is we are we actually have another data point to help us solve this equation and uh this data point is basically that uh at the second second last step you go to left or go to right right but then when you go to right at pn pn will actually be equal to one by definition so if we uh row row in uh pn equals one to the system of equations that we have we actually are able to say that n over n plus one times two times p one is equals to one. So, so far everything is perfectly rigorous and P1 therefore is, uh, n plus one over two n. Now, this is the part where I think it's a bit dubious on whether it's rigorous. So what I concluded therefore is that if we let n go to infinity, so by shifting this right wall, uh, towards infinity, we will converge towards basically the initial problem where we have a semi infinite line and P1, which is the probability of the party never ending, uh, when you start at one, will be the limit of all the, uh, P1 comma N. And in this case, the answer will be half. So I'm not sure how rigorous this is and whether you consider that as a, a rigorous solution. Uh, but if you accept this fact, then basically PK will then be given by, uh, substituting P1 as half, you get K over K plus one. And so the desired answer P20 is given by 20 over 21. So this is the best I can do. Uh, I think it still makes for interesting uh, discussion and it covers a number of uh, interesting ideas. So if you actually have uh, a way to justify the limit that I've taken, uh, please feel free to comment in the comment section below and I'll be happy to learn about it. Um, but all right, that is what I can cover for P. Uh, part one and for part two of the question actually is very similar but the uh, opposite so what happens is now you have the organizer of the party 
uh, decides to reverse the rule. Namely, if you pick a girl, then instead you are plus one to the right. If you pick a boy, instead you are plus two to the, uh, plus one to the left. So basically, now it's just the probability here is flipped. Uh, in essence, and instead of finding the probability that the party never ends, now uh, we are sort of find the expected number of rounds until the party ends. Uh, so as you can imagine, now the probability of going to the left is bigger than to the right, and so there's sort of like a a gravity effect towards zero. So it turns out the probability of always ending is one, and we want to find the expected number of rounds until the party ends. So for this part, I wouldn't uh, I won't go through the solution, but in essence, you can apply a similar uh, approach of setting up a recurrence relation and uh, try to solve it. Uh, again, you will need P1 and you can, uh, not P1, but rather the F1, uh, where F is the function that you define. Uh, but to solve for F1, you will need to, uh, one way is to assume that there's a large right, uh, end to, right end to the line and then take the uh, right wall towards infinity. So again, not sure how rigorous this is, but in essence, I hope this gives you a, a taste of how difficult uh, this contest is. I mean, this is probably the only question in the contest that has a reasonable chance of being solved, uh, at least by myself. Uh, not sure about you all, but uh, I'll share more uh, a link to, to more questions in the description below. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this uh, video interesting. and. Uh, do subscribe and stay tuned to the channel. See you soon.